I think, I, especially when I create my music, I'm trying. I'm, I'm so conscious of how is this gonna make somebody feel because that's so true. Like when I'm when I was choosing the song, I was like, am I gonna be happy by the end or sad? You know what I'm saying? Like I. I personally know I just want to leave light with people. Like I want them to finish listening to my songs and be like, ah, let's start this day. What's up, adolescent YouTube? It's your boy Jeremiah, and we're back for another episode with another dope human being. Today I'll be talking to singer, songwriter, dancer, entertainer Coco Jones about her viral internet resurgence, her time at Disney, new music, new movies, and so much more. But before we get to that, be sure to like and comment and subscribe to stay up to date on all the new adolescent YouTube content. But until then, here is Canada All Black Joy. Ah. Why do you think we're like so like shocked by like this personality you have? You know, how it kind of goes when you pop off is some people get obsessed with you, you know, like you see somebody in a show or in a song and you're like, who is this? You find everything about them, da 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 da. You know, um, I think for me, when I did pop off with Let It Shine, I didn't really, I didn't really um, keep that fire going. Like I didn't, you know, people didn't get the opportunity to really like, who is this girl? Because I was kind of like, I'm really no one. Thank you. You know, bye. I thought it was going to be more like, okay, I'll get more time to show who I am and I'll get more time to, for people to like become diehard fans of me, like on some Hannah Montana, like. You know, if you, it was if it was just Hannah Montana, the movie, okay, that was cool. Who was that girl, Miley? But unless she did this show and you get to see her and like, then, you know, like she does interviews from that and like she does collaborations from that, you know, like I thought I would have more time where the channel would kind of develop me and I would get to stay relevant enough to like, you know, have a platform, make my have own a full platform. audience. Yeah have a full audience that like are die hards for me. You know what I'm saying? Because there's always a difference between like the people who had a show and the people who had like a movie or something, you know, there's just like right. a deeper obsession with the people that had a show. Well, I think so, because um, of the nature of TV, you kind of get to know these characters. Like you feel like, oh, I know her. Like, even if you, like, for instance, like, I feel like Hannah Montana came, like I said, like the next generation, like the, it's like that, that middle uh -huh. ground. But like mm -hmm. for me growing up, it was like, you had Liz McGuire, you had That's a Raven. And like, oh. whether you really cared about them or not, they're on your TV all the time. And it's kind of like, yes. you, you yes. couldn't, when I see Hillary Duff, that's Liz McGuire. Yeah, that it's just, I thought, I think I thought, oh, this happened and I, it's just going to snowball. And like, by the time I'm, blah, 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 I'm already going to be, what's up? You know what I'm right. saying? I, um, I didn't even think about, hey, just in case this doesn't go the way everyone's telling you it's going to go, make a YouTube channel, start a blog, like start this Instagram. And like, I didn't even think like that. I had no... I had no backup plan. I just thought, it's a wrap now. We up now, you know? So um, I think that's why everybody was shocked. Like, what? You're hilarious because I um didn't, I never really showed that. Like, I never really did. And also my my personality was so, um, so um, created. I was like, when I say I was an employee, <laughs> when I say I was an employee, literally, it's just, it wasn't me. So... I think there's pros and cons because I could have easily went that Hannah Montana route. But then, like you said, when you see Lizzie, when you see him, wasn't that when you see what's her real name? Hillary is Lizzie. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I think for me, I'm grateful that I don't have a uh, Roxy is stuck with me, but it's not stuck Thank with me. You know like what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to rebrand. Yeah, it's like I don't have to rebrand myself as Roxy, whatever her last name was. I don't know because people can still see me as Coco as well, you know? Right. But Miley, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's I don't know. Hannah. I don't know her. I know Hannah. I'm sorry. With the you know? wig, with the bangs, the bang yang. Hey, with the bang yang. Okay. Don't don't come at me with that, Miley. I don't know all her. I don't know her. I don't know who I would be if I was stuck to a character the way I wanted to be. Like if I prayed, if I got everything I was praying for, I don't think I would like that. Honestly, knowing me now, I would. I probably would have been an employee for life, trapped, trapped. But employee of the month, regardless, employee of the year. I mean, obviously, if we doing it, we doing it big. Obviously. <laughs> oh, and you were recently on the Terrell show where you did amazing, mm -hmm. by the way. I think you missed uh what's you missed small for it's a small worth after all, but you know. I was like I can't oh. believe you're bringing that up. That's such an emotional topic. Even I was like, it's a small world. I feel like that was like I can't believe thing. you're saying this right now. I can't believe the words that I'm hearing. Um, you see how upset I but was? I would have given you that point for that uh Busta Rhymes verse because I don't know how. You know that whole. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I feel and like Terrell, 
and didn't and don't and won't. <laughs> I felt like, you know, Terrell could have definitely cut me some slack for sure. I felt like he was uh, being a little a little too pressed with the rules, but you know, you know, blessings coming always and no one can stop me. No one can stop my shine. Not yeah, even the words. The funniest fall. part about it was though the fact that she was like, I actually learned that just to perform on the bus in school. Yeah. But that's, See, like, that's so I'm, like yeah. real life though. Like you really be trying to like like I remember trying to like learn like the soldier boy dance and all that because you, you gotta be able to do it in school to perform it. When the Period. song comes on, you have to be able to perform. Um, you talked about kind of like feeling like Disney as an entity, kind of instead of saying like we're gonna craft things around Coco, we're gonna mm-hmm. make Coco fit into this already established box and trying to be like we're gonna make her this versus saying mm-hmm. I feel like even with like uh Molly Cyrus, Hannah Montana, it, it was still kind of like in her world, like you know, her father's this country star. It's still kind mm-hmm. of like Molly, it's not Molly to the T, but it's in that world, or even mm-hmm. Raven Simone with um That's a Raven, it still felt like this could really be Raven in real life, versus you kind yeah. of felt like. No, we're gonna take Coco and make her CC because we just yeah. Right now. So, how do you feel like that kind of, I guess, impacted your brand or whatever, or just people's perception of you? I mean, I think, yeah, I don't feel like they catered a plan specifically to me, but all of those things are still formulas. Like that's what Raven was supposed to be a white girl as the lead. But Raven came in there to be the best friend and tow it all the way up. And there was somebody in there who said, yeah, this is the formula, but something, this girl really good. You know what I'm saying? And I felt like for me, I didn't have enough people being like, I know the formula, but this girl, like, come on, let's do something. You know what I'm saying? I felt like, um, they did with let it shine. And then, you know, it's just hard to like convince a boardroom of many Caucasians that, this is the way we need to go. You know what I'm saying? That's with anything though. But I felt like I didn't have a super established brand. Like I knew I was like this Tennessee down South, like super polite, sweet girl and um, everything else. I don't know. I I don't know. Roxy, I feel like they kind of tapped into a portion of it where um, she didn't really want that that flashy lifestyle that wasn't authentic to who she is. And I feel like me now, I'm like, period. Cause uh all that all that other stuff, I'm like, no, I'm too regular for that. Like I feel you. That's right. can't resonate. Well once so I don't know, I don't think I had a brand enough. One thing that made me think about like like you saying people being able to see you and root for you. One of my questions mm-hmm. is, um mm-hmm. well obviously people always say this just like the internet's in just the society that we live in, as a darker skinned black woman, do you feel like that kind of like played a part in like kind of, and not just like, I wouldn't even just say like Disney, just in general part of your career, like having people view you differently or feel like, I think, I guess people have to take a, really have to take a chance. Like we go pick a dark skinned girl to lead this thing, to be the center of this thing. And it has happened, but it doesn't have to happen very often. Yeah, it's the exception to the rule. And it's like, why is there a rule anyway? Why can't it just be based on talent? Right. Because, um that's just that's just how it goes like that's how i feel like it's in the world in the world when it whether i'm interviewing for a movie or i'm interviewing for a job i already know here they go about to look at me crazy you know what do they even think about me which which role am i today am i am i am i cold switching like what are we doing here you know how do how do i get in here and be accepted by these people enough to get the opportunity that i know i already deserve and could easily body i feel like it's not even just the entertainment industry i feel like it's just the world for dark skinned women. I don't know. I don't know what where that I don't know what's going on, but you know what? I know in the Bible, last will be first. So if y'all want to play with us right now, what's up? What's up when we if we talking attorney? Let's talk. Like, you know, know what? Okay. Um yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's more just what I already knew came with being in my skin, but I think that's just another thing that makes black women so iconic. Like we really just all right, yeah, this is going to be the test and trial that I didn't deserve and I didn't ask for and I, I it really didn't doesn't need to. It just happens to me. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. And then we'll do it. And we'll still do it better than everyone else. Okay. Right. We're just hey, powerful. Time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what do you feel like as my, I guess, your hardest lesson you've had to learn in the industry so far? Although you're, like, still learning things. But what's something that you feel like mm-hmm. you really was like, okay, I got to uh, take this to the chin one time? I mean, first of all, I was taking to the chin all the time. I was getting humbled every freaking day. But um, I appreciate the humbleness because it drew me closer to God. Like, 
I'm I'm already knowing he knew not to put me on that platform just yet because I wasn't ready to fully be grateful like I, I am grateful now for everything, you know? So I think um the hardest lesson I learned was, I mean, the most crucial was to truly trust God with my life because I was on a roller coaster, okay? When I was booked, I was happy. When I was unemployed, I was depressed because that's where I put my value. I was like, okay, if, if I did this one time, I can keep doing it. Why am I doing it? Why is it not happening? You know what I'm saying? I already proved it to them. Why don't they believe? You know, and that was messing with my self-worth. But I also realized too, like, even when I get all these places I'm going to go, if I ain't got my happiness, if I ain't, if that's not tied to something consistent, it's not going to do what I'm thinking it's going to do, you know? So I think for me, it was really about placing my happiness in God because he's sustainable, you know what I'm saying? And trusting him when it doesn't make sense and when other people can't see my value, trusting that somebody really does see my value that like really loves me, you know? Amen. All right, y'all. Pass the collection plate around. Uh, I'm screaming. I'm screaming. You know, I'm not pass trying to like, do the Coco, most. Really just but... gave you <laughs> I'm not trying to do the most, but that's really just what helped me because, okay, no, right. you have to be grounded in something in this, yeah. in just this life, not even just in something wise. consistent because dealing with humans, you going to get your feelings hurt, point blank, period. So, multiple times a day. Multiple times a day. <laughs> so, what are we doing? Like, what, what's sustainable? What's consistent? That's no, weird. that's just that kind of brought me to my next question. When you kind of talked about like having your faith being like, I guess it's kind of kept you grounded in this like roller coaster of an industry, like kind of ups and downs, ups and downs. What are, I guess in that time, like, what are just some of the things that you kind of lean to? Like, I guess practical things that you say, I did this to kind of maintain my sanity. So it's not like I'm in the depths of of depression because I didn't yeah. get a call back or because I didn't get this role. Yeah. Um, you know what I really did? I started questioning things. I started questioning like what I was told and like if that's really my truth and who I really believe in because what I'm not about to do is be no robot. Like I don't care if what my upbringing was, what is my truth? What resonates with me because I'm pretty sure God don't want me up here thinking he's some fearful army sergeant and I can't even come to him on some real some real energy. I was like, "Hold up." I was like, why? I just started asking why. I was like, if you want me to really rep you, like, I got to, I got to, it's got to be personal because I feel like I don't know you good, sir. And I, this isn't going to work for me because I'm sad. So, um, I was depressed. <laughs> okay. No, literally. Um, so I think for me, I just started finding my own truth for myself and, um, breaking out of these, these boxes that I had for God and his character and like me being a Christian, like breaking out of these boxes and just finding what resonates with my heart. You know what I'm saying? Like what I can be authentic and genuine and really mean when I pray, really mean when I'm talking in these interviews, because I'm not just going to say what I've been told anymore. I can't keep doing that, you know? Um, and then also I would get outside, go be with my friends. Cause sitting in the house, I literally for a year, I think I was watching Grey's Anatomy all day. That's what I would do. I was like, this ain't right. How I watched 12 seasons of the longest show in history. I feel like I, right. I feel like that was like towards me because I might have <laughs> done the same thing at one point. But it's okay because I'm not there anymore. Yeah, that's, what, that's what you need to go through to get where you at right now. But, but what yes, I, I will say <laughs> was I am thankful for Shonda Ron having one of the longest at shows. Okay, I Eric said. Christina kept me for like consistently for like <laughs> they held me the they held me close they held me close um but yeah just making an intentional effort to like stop doing the repetitive like you're not gonna get a different result if you keep waking up and staying on the couch love like step outside you know do something different that's real um well mm -hmm. you were consistent with like putting out music you, you dropped a lot of projects singles and things like that like when i just mm -hmm. sung depressed I was <laughs> depressed <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's also just very catchy. I think that's why I stuck in my head. <laughs> LOL. I mean, I appreciate it, you know. But um, what have you, I guess, what have you found, like, the inspiration, especially, like, right now, um, with so much going on in 2020, how have you consistently, <laughs> from just uh, post-Disney to, to <laughs> now, continue to find, like, I guess, inspiration to write and create music? I mean, it's a creative outlet. I have no choice but to, like, take what's going on and just sing that, you know, like it's just second nature, but, um, music really 
helps me like when I work with my producers, we just talk, we have discussions about life, what's going on, like the good and the bad in the world and in your own personal. And then people just start creating and it's just like, oh Lord, I got something to say. Turn on the mic. You know what I'm saying? Like it just draws out your truth, you know? No, um, so yeah. I really appreciate being in a creative environment because sometimes I, I'll have ideas and I'll be like at my house in the shower or something. I'll be like, whoa, whoa. But then other times I'm like, eh, I don't know. I'm, I'm watching The Office. I don't really know what I want to sing. But when I get into these these areas where all we do is create and all that's around is music, it just brings something out of you. But life is what I'll be writing about. Life. Real-ish out here in these streets. Real. Really? Um, well, you did just drop a new song called Holly Weird, I mean. <laughs> but you said, um, the city of angels is devils just covered in diamonds. All of the glitter just dust you can't trust, though it's blinding. Mm-hmm. And one, <laughs> that's so true, just in general. Um, mm-hmm. It made me think about kind of, I think you, you might have mentioned this in an interview that I saw or in one of your videos, just kind of the mm-hmm. idea of like, people's expectation of like LA and Hollywood and then what it's really like to be in LA and Hollywood. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even for me, like I moved here maybe last year, I think. Okay. Last year. And uh-huh. I think even like post-college, you have, a, like I've lived different places, but you still have an idea of like what LA is like, what Hollywood mm-hmm. is like. Mm-hmm. And then you get here and be like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like, oh, I mean, I guess. the weather is nice. Though. I will say that's one thing. I will say the weather is always nice. Yeah, and um, and they're gonna always get that for me. The weather's always gonna be one of the pluses of being here. They'll always get that for me. Like I'm from the uh, south, and I went to school in the west. I'm mean, on the east coast, and like my uh-huh. friends, the, somebody posted like them wearing like a uh, like a whole like sweatsuit and like uh, mm-hmm. bundled up. I was like, oh, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's literally like mm-hmm. 70, 80 degrees out here. Um, but what was being, what was your biggest thing that you thought was like an expectation that you had that kind of like wasn't what it really was like when you got here? I thought it would be more like in the movies, you know how when they're like, you, you're a star, draw this, and now your world changes. I thought right. when I got here, people would see my talent and it'd be like, oh my gosh, she's amazing. Now she's got a show. She lives here. She, You know, like I, I just thought it would be like, a movie, you know, when in reality, everybody comes here with that same idea. And everybody, like, actually, you're the white man. we're trying to get to that girl right there. Literally, it'd be like, actually, oh, not only are you reading for this, so we're like 70 girls that look kind of similar to you with their own little spin on it. It's like, it's just a little bit of a harsher reality, I think. Um, I think it's just a little bit of a harsher reality, but you know. It's also because it's so like it's so much in the movies. Hollywood is like there's plenty of stories and songs and you know movies about it. So it makes it look like it's gonna be this, you know, like pretty picture that's been painted in the media. But it's not ugly. It's just like oh, it ain't the hype. It ain't what it. It's not the hype. It's not it's the hype. Like I thought I would you... be everywhere. I thought I would walk to the dang Walmart and see you know Shaka Khan. Nobody was outside. <laughs> I don't know where they go, but they don't be outside. They don't Not be at Walmart. God. I'm screaming. <laughs> I don't know. It was like the first name that popped in my head. You know, I thought I would see like freaking. I thought I would see Raven and them. I thought Raven I would see all of them. No, she said, "I'm not coming out." She said, "I don't step. I don't even leave my house." But that's kind of like I think people think of even like a city like New York, where it's like the New York lights, da da da. And then you talk mm-hmm. to your friends that live in New York. They're like, New York is actually very dirty. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I don't like no, that. I was filming. I did Vampires versus the Bronx in New York, and I was like. <laughs> Y'all smell that? <laughs> it was very, very, very interesting at times. It's like it's not, it's not giving what, what y'all said it was go gay. It's not. It was, y'all said it was go gay. <laughs> it's not that. Yeah. It wasn't. And but I think uh, your song kind of like really details that in a way. It's kind of like yeah, mm-hmm. Hollywood is painted as one thing, but when you get here, it's really like, uh... yeah, yeah. It's just more about okay, you still got to hustle. It's not going to be magic. It's going to be effort and persistence, talent and preparation and practice and repetitive no's and tenacity. And then finally you get there. Well, you just said one thing that, that made me think of this. Um, kind of like you said, the idea of like auditioning and obviously in the nature of like acting entertainment, people are placed into like types and you have a type, mm-hmm. every, every actor has a mm-hmm. type. So what is it really like to like go to an audition and see everyone that's like, oh, 
like that Spider-Man meme. It's like, oh, we all kind of look alike. Yeah. Kinda. You know, it's crazy. We all we all start to know each other after a while, and except for like when some new girls come that you ain't you ain't seen before. Because typically, you know, they do you, they do your role for that day. So all the people reading for Crystal, they coming in that day, you know. So you're, you're going to see, like, your similar shades of skin color, similar heights. Like, um, we kind of start to know each other, you know. And it's sometimes, um, like, unfortunate that, like, we'll be in the waiting rooms and it's like we in some competition or something. Like, we in some race for this final piece of cheese, this rat race. And so we don't talk to each other. Like, we'll be sitting there like... You know your lines. I know my lines. <laughs> Literally, like, good luck. You know, but is that your song that's ready? Your sixteen it. bars. I know my sixteen bars. Okay, and then and sometimes you can hear them in there. So then you like listening, like, oh, how did she say that? Oh, okay, she said it like that. Okay, well then I can't say it like that, or maybe I should. Oh, she want to sing that song. <laughs> okay, it's so competitive. Like, it can get really toxic if you don't have a mindset of abundance. If you don't have a mindset of like, yeah, this may this role may not be for me, but shame on them, not on me. Well, I think the weirdest thing is, like you said, like, it's not like we're several different people. We all kind of are like the same person on paper. It's like, so literally it's kind of like, y'all got somebody, if I don't get it, I think you said this in your interview with Terrell, you, I think you said your dad taught you the idea, like, there's somebody that's coming right after you that can do the, that's, yeah. not just can do the same thing as you, but they also kind of look like you. So really. Literally. <laughs> and like, you like hold the door open for them. Like, okay, thank you. Oh, are you coming? You hold the door for them. They cross you and y'all, y'all look the same. Like, it can be so, um. It can be so traumatic to your self-esteem and stuff if you don't make a make an effort to be like, hey, I know that I'm in this industry and I chose to be here because this is my desire and my passion. But what this ain't finna do is take my joy, period. Exactly. Come on, hold on to the joy. That's all you got to do. Okay. But I do want to know, what is one of your like funniest or craziest audition moments or stories that you can think of? Hmm. And it could be I recent, it could be old, throwback, but just something you'd be like, you know what? I mean, honestly, it has to be the story time that I told. Like, I don't know if you saw this one where I was getting really close in this big movie and I basically had to whitefish real quick. I had to whiten it up. They were like, we love you, but we're going to need you to just come a little bit more exotic next time. I got this curly hair wig. I got some green contacts. I went to the dang uh, makeup counter. I was like, yeah, color match me. Th this one, this one. <laughs> They're they were like, like, this, this one, one said this one. That one. Literally. <laughs> um, and I just went in there looking a clown. I just was like, I can't believe that this is what I'm doing for a actual check. But you know, it was AMC. I'm trying to be in there. I'm trying to be in your local theater. I honestly and truly. So I, I couldn't even see in the context. I felt like I had on the DUI glasses that they do at school. But and I didn't even get it over there looking like looking crazy but it was funny i have to laugh at it now all right to wrap this up i have a lightning round of questions these are my black joy questions that i always okay. end my show with um so just think of the first thing that pops in your brain and they're okay. all centered around black joy and blackness because okay. yeah because okay. why not so the first one is what do you love most about black people um the jokes the jokes we are some of the most funny <sighs> I mean, me specifically, I'm thinking about my family immediately. And how me, we can just I'm sit at the table. Like, me. <laughs> me LOL. I'm thinking about my family and how we can just sit at a table and laugh. Like, what are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? Definitely the jokes. All right. So my next one is, it's the holiday season. And okay. obviously, you know, everybody's having like, well, maybe not this year because, you know, COVID. But typically, we have mm -hmm. our like family gatherings, potlucks. So okay. what are you in charge of bringing to the family potluck? Um, my voice. I'm probably gonna have to sing some song that they tell me to sing. They're like, "Come on, sing that one song and, you did that one time." Yeah, do, do, that, do that little thing you be doing. Do that little thing you do. You know how they make you do. And I'm like, "Okay, pop out. Here we go." And five, six, seven, eight. But yeah, probably my voice. Honestly. <laughs> what is your uh, favorite black proverb? And by that I mean, like, my favorite one that my dad always says is, "If you can huh, you can hear." Oh my lord. That's my favorite black proverb that I'm probably gonna pass down to future generations of black children. Mm. You know what I just thought in my head? You said the first thing that popped in your head. I'm just gonna have to tell you. This don't make no sense. But <laughs> okay, you know how they say I give you something to cry about. I don't know. I don't know why this is part of my head, but then I started thinking, wait a minute, that mess made me strong. Because I'll be looking at these issues in life and I'll be like, you know what? This really ain't nothing to cry about. I'm really gonna be all right. You could get so I don't know. 
Okay, I okay. I know there's some trauma along with that with that statement, but I don't know. There was the first thing to pop in my head. I was kind of triggered. I was like, "Oh my, is my dad here?" Is he Literally, it, it popped in my head. I said, "Wait," but um, in a sense, it just reminds me of how resilient we are as black people. Um, who is a black person that you want to like shine a light on today? It can be someone famous, someone personally, you know. But who is someone you want to be like? I Man, that's my mom for me. It's my mother for me. That woman is just. If I can just become half of all the things she's been in my life to my daughter, I'm going to be the best mom in the world because she's just everything to me. She's so wise. She's so patient and kind, so selfless, mm, so smart. Love her. Shout out to the moms out here. Um, mm. What is your favorite black movie or TV show? Mm, dang, let me see. What's a black movie? And you can't say Let It Shine. That don't count. <laughs> First of all, that was the number one urban TV movie of the year, of that year. So don't try me. Um, let me see. Hmm. Does white chicks count? It does. Although it's okay. white characters. Take it, okay, that is a little it's problematic because it is called white chicks. But you know the Wayans but Brothers were funny that's, Wayans, funny. that's like, yeah, that's definitely. That's They're funny. so funny. I don't know. I just, I loved how they would imitate them. I don't know. It's just really funny to me. Okay. Um, what is your favorite lyric or song by a black artist? Lord Jesus. Okay. Um, probably uh, Love Galore by SZA. Okay. Because I was going to say, we know after the Terrell show, you don't know the lyrics. So It's crazy how you keep bringing these things up. It's crazy. It's all fresh in my brain. Like I, When I say, before every interview, I like binge the person's everything. So like... Uh -huh. Okay, well, see, I was trying to put that in the memory treasure chest and not open it again. So it's like, what? Are, what? What? But what the vocals what? were there, though. That's all that mattered. Because, you know, I, I mean, thanks. I mean, thanks, finally, because you've been talking about my mess up. So thank you. Because some people know the lyrics, but don't know the right note or the key. And it's like, at, at the end of the day, did I get the point across? Did they? Did y'all know what song I was talking about? Just be like, uh, Pat LaBelle, the where is my, uh, where are the background singers? Where are my <laughs> lyrics? Where are my key cards? Oh my gosh. Um, so oh favorite song. So I would say Love the Lord or possibly um Focus by Her. Those songs were just pivotal for me. I was like, yo, hold up. Let me reassess. Let me reassess me as an artist because they coming crazy. Let me, let me, let me what am what am I doing? They're definitely like hearing it for the R and B girls right now. Like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. lyrically and like just content wise. I'm ready for yeah. both of their next albums actually. Um, and last but not least, final question to end us all. What brings you Coco Jones, Black Joy? What brings me Black Joy? I would say being with my family and being with my girls. I think, um, yeah, we're going to have a lot of opposition, but it's nothing like being with the people who understand exactly what that means. You know what I'm saying? There's a comfort there, you know? Like, um... Yeah, like just like being at a dinner table with my girls and everything we talk about, like I know exactly how she feels. You know what I'm saying? Like that's where I belong. I feel like I belong there, you know? So um, especially in a world that try to make you feel so much like you just don't belong here, you know? That's true. That's so, true. So yeah, and I get my black people joy around my black people. Period. Period. And that's on <laughs> Dr. King. That's on Coretta Scott. Malcolm X. You're annoying. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Coco Jones, for joining me um, on this episode of Counted Out Black Joy. So we know you have your latest single out, Holly Weird, which is on all streaming platforms, correct? Spotify, mm -hmm. the Apple Music's title. Um, mm -hmm. You also are in Vampires vs. the Bronx on Netflix. What else can we expect from you soon? I'll be dropping a music video soon for um, Holly Weird. It, everything just was so fast. I was just trying to get something out there for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, and then I'm gonna be working on my project like crazy because you know, my these people got my producers invested. They're ready to go. They're like, "What's good?" And I'm like, we "And period." You. Okay. They see they see y'all waiting, and they're like, "Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up." So you. I'm gonna drop a new project definitely at the top of the year. Um, so where can people <laughs> follow you on social media, like your website, all the different things to kind of stay up to date with Coco? 
Yes. Um, Instagram, Coco Jones. Twitter, The Real Coco J. TikTok, which I'm on TikTok, blowing the H up. The um, of the money TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> okay. Um, Coco Jones, and Facebook is Coco Jones. And your YouTube channel that you're always on. Oh, Lord, yes. Coco Jones sings. And um, I got some more things I got to tell folks. Like, you know what I'm saying? Now that I know people like really interested in my little stories and stuff, I'm I'm gonna keep I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep telling. I'm gonna keep talking about. We like we like to know the the. the it's just community. that y'all are nosy, but I'm like I mean if you want the tea, I will serve it hot. Do you want lemon? Do you want lemon on the side? How many sugar cubes? I mean I guess. No, nah, but I'm I'm really enjoying being able to connect with my fans more and my supporters more and just them see like more about me. I didn't know people cared. I was like okay. No, definitely. Well, thank you again for joining me. And this is Counted All Black Joy. Period. Thank you.